Hello, welcome to this lesson on acid base indicators. The question of the day is there a quick way to know if a solution is an acid or a base? Indicators are a chemical substance and it is going to change color due to the presence of H plus or OH minus, i.e., its pH. And we're going to be able to compare that color to a standard which means we have a color chart saying like this solution of a pH is going to be this color and this solution of a pH will be that color. And then we can make comparisons super quickly. While we do have access to indicators and can find pH super quickly, it's not going to be an exact reading. And the reason is because most of these indicators aren't going to tell you exactly, hey, this color is a pH of five. It's usually like this pH is somewhere between a one and a five. So you're just going to get like a snapshot picture. It's not going to be super on the nose accurate, but it gives us a point in the right direction. A lot of the time we have to use more than one indicator in order to shrink that range and get down to a pretty good idea of what the indicator or rather what the pH is. There are machines called pH meters where you can get an exact reading, but it's calibrated, um, usually not as quick. There's a lot of cleaning involved so that you don't have uh, an old solution stuck to your pH probe. It's not that exciting. These are instantaneous. They drop in and change color. Um, so while we have this, I just want you to take a look at some of these ranges. This one goes from 3.8 to 5.4. So this is a decently small range, but this one here goes from 4.5 to 8.3. So some of this is acid. There's also a neutral reading and there's a basic reading. Um, over here, our reading is almost two whole points. Same here, almost two points. So these are good. They give us a quick snapshot, but they're not perfect. Also, there are hundreds if not thousands of different chemical indicators this is just ones that are commonly used um it kind of depends there are others there's also universal indicator which is my favorite because it will give you an entire rainbow spectrum um and then there are some natural acid base indicators and then there are some that just have a small color range here so like this one can be yellow or blue or a mixture of the two which is green so like I said, universal indicator is beautiful. It changes colors very nicely. Uh, the warm colors, if you remember from art class as a, a elementary student, the warm colors are acid, the greens are neutral or close to neutral, and then the cool colors are base. But I want you to notice how close seven, eight, and nine really are to each other and how close nine and 10 are to each other and how close 12 and 13 are to each other and how close two and three are to each other. There's only so many colors. So um, it's very tough to get a reading. Not only that, the um, depth of the color can change based on how much um, indicator you've actually added. So if you have you know, just a hundred milliliters of this solution. And then you do one drop of an indicator. You're going to have a very rich color, but if you're doing this in one liter and you do one drop, it's going to be very, very faint and kind of hard to read. Um, we also don't love to add a lot of indicator drops because it is not ideal simply because indicators can shift a pH. <laughs> and this might be the quantitative analysis in me. But indicators aren't necessarily neutral. So if you add a lot of an indicator in order to get a deep color, you can actually be shifting the concentration half a point in one direction or half a point in the other, sometimes even like a whole point. So it's important to use as little indicator as possible. Um, and this is why we love test tubes. You can just take a little sample and add the indicator to a very small sample so you can get a rich color without affecting your full solution. Now using a pH range doesn't actually, it's not that tough. So if we're looking at the example of methyl orange, methyl orange says that it is, um, let's go back to the table and look at it specifically. Methyl orange is right here. It says from 3.1 to 4.4, it will be red to yellow. That's the color change. Well, how do we actually read that? I always do it as an arrow and just plop the two values on top of that arrow. So if we look 
at the pH scale, it runs from one to 14. And if we put the numbers on top of the colors, this is what we get. 3.1 and lower would be red, 4.4 and higher would be yellow, and anything in the middle is going to be whatever red and yellow are when they mix together, which in this case is orange. That wasn't listed on the table. You're gonna need a little bit of art skills in order to do pH ranges. So if you have a solution and you test it with methyl orange and it comes back red, you know that your pH is somewhere between one and 3.1. If it comes back orange, you know that your pH is somewhere between 3.1 and 4.4, but if it comes back yellow, it is anywhere from 4.4 all the way to 14, which is crazy because 4.4 is an acid. Scroll a little bit, you hit seven, your solution's neutral, keep going, and you can have a crazy strong base. And 4.4 is not a weak acid, that's a pretty strong acid. So yellow with methyl orange, really is telling you nothing. <laughs> you have almost no information. Um, so it's important that if you got a yellow result here, that you go and you check it again to see where the pH lies with another indicator. So like I said, you are going to want to, if let's say you got a yellow result, you're going to want to use a second test with a new indicator in order to narrow down your pH further, because getting a yellow result on a methyl orange test tells you virtually nothing. <laughs> One of my favorite flowers are hydrangeas because I think they're a chemist's favorite flower. Um, all of the colors you see in these PowerPoints are based on the colors from hydrangeas. This pink is a little crazy <laughs> compared to this one. Um, but anyways, here we have um, a natural acid base indicator. So the leaves are just gonna be green no matter what, but the flowers themselves are going to shift from blue to pink depending on the um, pH of the soil. So if they are blue, then they are being grown in acidic soil. And if they're pink, they're somewhere in the alkaline or basic soil. Now you can have, again, a spectrum of these, like over here we have a lot of blues and then this one's a little bit more pink. It's just kind of like what the plant has access to. Um, the white hydrangeas are unaffected by the pH of soil. They just grow white and that's what they are. But these um, do change based on the pH of the soil. If you have a hydrangea plant and you are interested in changing the colors, then you can actually. Acidic soil, you can take used coffee grounds and add that to the soil and that will make your soil more acidic and that will shift your hydrangeas to be a little bit more blue. If you want pink, then you can add crushed up eggshells. Even if you get it like down to a dust, it's better um, because they're very basic. And then that can change the pH of the soil. And then a pretty purple will be somewhere in between. Blueberries are also a natural acid base indicator. Um, I don't remember the name of the chemical in blueberries, but there's a chemical in blueberries specifically. They are red in more acidic environments and they are more bluish, yellowish, greenish in basic environments. So like here, you can see that these blueberries kind of have like this reddish syrup. That means that this is a little bit acidic. And other times you have blueberries and it makes like the muffin almost like a yellowy greeny color. That would mean that it's a little bit more basic. All in all, indicators are a pretty good way to get a snapshot of a pH of a solution. Again, it's not I mean, it is an exact science, but it's not exact. Uh, we know that these numbers that we're reporting are really good numbers because they've been tested over and over and over again. But like we said, with these tests with really big ranges, we can't get an exact pH from just one test. So going back here, um, phenolphthalein, for instance, will be pink if it's nine or greater. So it really is just telling you, hey, this is a base. If it's colorless, it says, hey, it's an acid. Um, but beyond that, you don't really know the strength of that acid or of that base. So again, you're going to want multiple indicators in order to narrow down the e exact pH or really just shrink that window as much as possible. So that's all on indicators. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.